Yeah, hey, great to be here. Thanks, Felix, also. I, lots of the points in your presentation really resonated heavily. Uh, I'm going get, to be getting back to some of your points also in this presentation, I think. But yeah, uh, so my name is Juho, I come from Finland. I represent a company uh, called ShareTribe. Uh, so what we do, uh, essentially, we make it uh, easy and affordable for entrepreneurs and organizations to create their own rental or labor platforms. So I'm going to start this presentation with why. So why I think this is important uh, for the world, that's what we are doing. Uh, so essentially our mission uh, is to uh, democratize uh, platform ownership. Uh, obviously, if you look at the state of the so-called sharing economy today, uh, obviously it looks like this. So we have these uh, giant dead star platforms, uh, Uber, Airbnb, Deliveroo. Trevor in his presentation went really well into the details why this obviously is a really bad thing in several ways, why these platforms are extracting lots of value uh, from the communities instead of like bringing it back to them. And, uh, and obviously that's uh, something uh, that should be changed. And I think, uh, like, like Felix mentioned in his presentation, like one big reason why this is so, like why these platforms dominate, is that it actually takes lots of resources uh, to build really high quality user experiences, to build the technology like behind these platforms. And I think that one reason why more uh, platform cooperatives haven't taken off like Felix's story is not unique in this sense. Like I've heard this from many others, like building uh, more social enterprises, building uh, different uh, platforms governed in a different way, is uh, that they don't have the kind of like the required resources to build like high quality technology. So essentially, uh, like yesterday, uh, David in his dinner talk was talking about like technology becoming a commodity. And I think that that's what really needs to happen. Like the platform technology also, needs to become a commodity, and that's what we want to achieve. Essentially, we want to make this platform technology accessible to everybody. So that's kind of like that when, uh, this is essentially what we achieve, like that instead of just having these few giants, we have this whole ecosystem. There will be co-ops, uh, maybe there will be towns or cities starting their own platforms, uh, there will be nonprofits, NGOs, uh, SMBs, and all of these if no longer resources and technology are not the bottleneck, they can start their own. Like they can, people can vote with their feet. Like if they're not happy with the rules of a particular platform, go and start your own. And that's essentially uh, what we hope, hope to enable. And, and that's, that's the mission. Like that's, that's why we are doing uh, what we are doing. So uh, after that, move, moving into how, how actually we're doing that. So uh, essentially uh, with our software, anybody, can uh, get started building their own platform super quickly. So essentially, uh, at the very minimum, in one day, without any technical skills, you can get kind of like a minimum viable platform uh, up and running. This is, for instance, with Fairmondo UK uh, did, uh, even though we are not really that much focused on like product selling marketplaces, which, uh, which, which they had some struggles, so we're mostly focusing on rental and labor. Uh, use cases in particular, but essentially like you can get something a bit like Airbnb or Fiverr uh, working in, in one day. But what I, th what I think is, is even more important that we're working now on, on mostly is that once like you've built that, uh, then at some, some point you will definitely notice that each platform also has its unique components and features, something is only specific to that platform. And that's why it needs, it's super important that it can be tailored. So we offer, offer also tools for uh, developers to basically build on this and basically build anything they want on top of that, like any customizations for an individual platform. So uh, essentially the, the core idea here is that we've taken a look at like how many of these platforms, like how uh, rental platforms like Airbnb and GetAround and so on, and how uh, labor platforms like Uber, Handy, TaskRabbit, uh, Rover, and, and so on, like what, what are the common elements in them? And usually there's, uh, like, there's lots of similarities in terms of the so-called kind of like a backend on like kind of like all these, these platforms, they have some certain common elements, like they all deal with user authentication, they deal with search, they deal with like geolocation, uh, they deal with storing and uh, displaying media files, uh, uh, handling scheduling, availability calendars, so on, uh, all kinds of like pricing engines, uh, booking engines, uh, online payments, obviously a crucial component, uh, messaging between users, sometimes review systems, notifications, like all that stuff. Uh, and then also typically there's some, uh, some kind of like an 
admin uh, tool, uh, which essentially, obviously, like all these platforms, they also need to monitor what's happening there. So they need to have some kind of analytics, who is using it and who is buying and, and so on. Like they need to engage with their users in various ways and, and also like sometimes like moderate the content, like what's actually happening there. And then uh, all of them have their own user interface. And I think that's where most of the differences lie. Like all of them, they look a bit different. Like there are similar components to them but still, like, they all have been really tailored to the specific use case. So essentially what we're doing at ShareDrive is that we have built this software that essentially covers this part. So basically, uh, nope, anybody building uh, their platform uh, on top of ShareDrive software doesn't really need to build their own backend or the admin console, because that's kind of like a built-in by, by ShareDrive, and that's uh, built in a flexible way, so essentially it covers all these different use cases. Well, uh, I would be exaggerate exaggerating a bit, like if I would be saying that we are doing that today, that's kind of like the vision. For instance, right now we are way better at the rental platform still than like some, some use cases than, than Uber, but we're getting there. Uh, but essentially, and then we provide, for the user interfaces, we provide uh, open source templates that basically you can uh, take, and then on top of that, uh, you can build anything you want. So when essentially build any, any custom components on top of that. So essentially you shouldn't be limited by by what ShareDrop has to offer, but you can build the unique stuff uh, on top of that. So uh, today we are powering uh, a bit more than 700 plus, uh, platforms in 50 countries around the world. So we've been around, around also for quite a while. Uh, definitely like most of them are in the so-called like Western countries like US, uh, Western Europe. But there's also a bunch working in Hong Kong, Singapore, Japan, uh, Australia, so also, also around here. Uh, so. Uh, and uh, another important thing what Felix mentioned is that the finding a sustainable business model is quite important. So right now we are uh, like have, I, I would say that we have found it. So we have like a revenues of like 1.2 million US right now annually. Uh, obviously still relatively small, but essentially it means that we are able to sustain ourselves by, by revenue. So we are not going away in the, in the near future. So essentially the revenue is coming from the hosting fees uh, paid by all these uh, like small businesses that are powering, using our software to power their platform. So we are providing hosting for them. Uh, so just like a few super quick examples. So most of these are rental or labor platforms. So rentals are typically like peer-to-peer -peer platforms for renting bicycles from, like this from UK or re renting places with swimming pools. This is in France. Uh, renting uh, baby strollers and other such products. This is platform in Finland. And then all kinds of like labor platforms, like from booking a handyman, Switzerland. Uh, this is a dark sitting marketplace in uh, Malaysia, uh, and like a tutoring platform uh, from the US. And I also want to highlight specifically like two uh, platform co op cases we're working with. Uh, one of them was mentioned by uh, Trevor. Uh, so we are working with a team of Airbnb, which obviously wants to create a better like a better Airbnb, one that puts money back into the local communities, doesn't break the regulations. So we're right now working with the team to get their uh, minimum viable platform launched, hopefully in the, in the coming months, so that they can finally get uh, start accepting bookings and, and making this, this dream uh, a reality. Uh, another example uh, comes from Tenerife. There's the, this community called uh, Communify. They're actually building an entire ecosystem of of platforms there. So essentially the idea is that they create a host of host of different platforms for like providers like from the local community. So right now they are, are running one, which is more about deals with all kinds of like local services and events like for you can book a tour guide or like a various cooking event or, or this type of things. But they actually want to create others and then they want to create a replicable ecosystem. So basically uh, other local communities like like the one they have in Tenerife, like but can just take this and, and like easily create. And obviously, for them, it's quite essential to have something that they can easily spin up new platforms uh, quickly. Um, yeah, so so that's that's about what we do. And and then I wanna wanna talk about the third point, uh, which I think also is quite important, which is how uh, our company is structured today. Uh, so uh, obviously we've had this mission for a while and we've been going around the world also to events like this, telling people about this mission and, and the question we would probably hear the most is, is what prevents you from uh, becoming one of them, <laughs> is essentially. So what, what, pre like what if ShareTribe like, will become like an extractive platform giant, like just like every other? Like, and, and 
at the time, like when we first heard this question, the, the truth is that we really didn't have a good answer. Like we we started with uh, with a more traditional startup structure. So uh, uh, so essentially, we even had some uh, early stage uh, early stage investors. And like at the time when we the company was founded already in 2011, at the time I had, had never like uh, even thought about like that the, we would start a co-op. Like nobody was really doing that. And, and then when I, kind of like a, later when we kind of like became disillusioned uh, about the startup world, the, the reality is that we were really not sure like how, uh, how we could transition. And uh, so, and, and like, uh, as, as Felix <laughs> meant, like uh, th this can be a, like a path, uh, like still towards like, so you can start with a more traditional thing and, and transition later, but it's not ne always necessarily easy. But uh, ultimately we, we found a way to do something about it. Uh, so. Last year, uh, we found this uh, company structure, uh, like a new kind of like a company structure type uh, that is called steward ownership. It's developed by a, a team uh, a team in Germany, and essentially there are like a few key components to it. Uh, but like they, they somehow they can like be summarized in that, that that kind of like with this structure, like we can make like a binding promise like to all our stakeholders, which doesn't mean only our employees or only our customers, it basically means the entire like society. Like we, we won't and can't like sell out. Like we are, this company exists because of its mission, not because of the traditional company purpose of like maximizing profit for the shareholders. So there are a few key components like what that uh, make this possible. Uh, one, one, first one is that uh, only people who are actively working at the team can uh, held rights uh, for voting. So basically, we cannot uh, kind of like move voting rights out outside of the active team. If I lead the team, I also need to give up my my own voting voting rights. So essentially, this obviously makes us, even though like the officially we are still like a traditional limited company, this actually makes us quite a lot closer to a cooperative uh, in this sense. Uh, and which uh, and obviously this is, brings to the second point, which means that our company cannot be sold anymore or it cannot also cannot be taken public in traditional sense because these voting rights cannot be transferred. Uh, but, but there's even more. Like I, I think that this alone like doesn't yet guarantee that we would be working for the mission. Like it could just mean that we will start maximizing the benefit of the active team members. And that's not really what we want to do. We want a, this company to be focused on on this purpose, like democratizing platform ownership and not just like on, on like my like our personal like finances. So so there's a third component. We actually are limiting heavily our profit distribution and, and so and, and salaries. So essentially there's a cap. So basically any shareholder can only earn revenues like from the profits up to a certain point. So as an example, we recently did a funding round and there like the investors will eventually, when we make enough profit, get five times what they originally invested back, which obviously is a really very nice return but it's not like limitless return. Once they've gotten that, they will not get any more. Also, uh, the members of the team, like we cannot pay normal dividends, so there's some comp compensation we will get for the early reward, but there's like a really pretty, relatively uh, like a reasonable cap, and after that, we will not get any more. So we will get still salaries, but also we cannot pay salaries that exceed market rates. So essentially, all the subsequent profits can only be used for things that advance our purpose. So essentially for us, like pro profits are really means uh, to getting, uh, getting to this mission and, and not the means uh, end in itself. Uh, and one final point is, is why, why, why this is binding is that we have like a foundation set up that basically prevents us from ever changing our mind. So if three years now we would decide, no, actually we want to go back, let's revert the company structure and, 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 and sell out and, and so on. Uh, we couldn't do that. So there's a, a foundation that has a veto share so if you try uh, to pre uh, at some point, let's see how much. Uh, all right, one minute, perfect. Uh, that's e exactly what I need. So, uh, uh, so uh, essentially, this foundation is bound by its rules uh, to prevent any such change that would like dismantle this structure and change these terms. So even even if the people who are managing the foundation would want to do that, they cannot do that because like with foundation, you can just set it in this rule. So it really is is a permanent structure. Yeah, so uh, I, th I think that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, one final point is that, uh, so basically uh, this uh, structure not only like enables us to try, but it's also even possible with this type of structure to raise some money. So this spring we completed uh, uh, equity crowdfunding round. So obviously 
venture capitalists are not very interested in investing in companies like this or, or like similar problem than with cooperatives. But instead, we were able to turn to the crowd and, and, and we found lots of people, individuals who were interested in investing with this cap returns model. And more than 400 people from 42 countries invested more than one, point, uh, more than one million euros in, in our company. All right, that's it. Uh, thanks so much. And by the way, one more point. I also like we wrote this uh, wrote this book about also like building platforms. So if somebody is building a platform of their own, like I have a few copies, so like I, I can kind of share some. Thanks.